Welcome to the epic, the sardonic, the tintillating, best fit square! Hey folks, welcome back to Best Fit Square Show. Today we take a look at wealth creation in early North America. And to help us better understand this, our very own in-house scholar, P.T. Hey P.T. Hey Mo. So how do we do it? Build this enormous wealth. Wealth creation in early North America begins with the near extermination of its native peoples. Now, if the job had been properly executed like the Spaniards did when they encountered native peoples, whew, no more natives, and perhaps no awkward legacy to be held accountable to. What has this got to do with wealth creation? Remember, North America was inhabited by sovereign native nations for millennia. The land belonged to them, the Apache, Cherokee, Seminoles, other native tribes and countries. The idea was, wage war against these nations, exterminate their people, and forcibly steal their land. <laughs> Millions of acres were stolen. Okay, so the land is now in the hands of North America's government. What has this got to do with wealth creation? Well, there's so much land, it held little value. This produced a conundrum. With this windfall of land in hand, how do we create wealth for land ownership? The solution? Dole out the stolen property free to insiders and squatters. Okay, so let me be certain I understand you, PT. You say North America's government wage war upon sovereign nations to steal their land, then redistribute this stolen property free to insiders and squatters? Yeah, this redistribution of stolen property gradually turned the abundance of land into a scarcity of land and with it, the rise of prices for the land, making land ownership a wealth creator. You gotta remember, Mo, up until this time, buying and selling slaves was the best route for wealth creation. A major business, slaves, free labor, were scarce, thus more valuable than land. So, if I understand you correctly, PT, the abundance of land depressed its price, the scarcity of slaves inflated their price, so to build wealth, investors flocked to buy and sell slaves because it was the more profitable investment? Indeed. As land became scarce, land prices began to rise, making land the more profitable investment. Slaves, on the other hand, began to lose their luster. Yeah! Remember though, slaves had carrying costs. Carrying costs? Feeding, clothing, housing, health care, what there was of it, was far greater than carrying costs for open land. Land has little to no carrying costs and maintenance, making land a nearly hassle-free investment. Furthermore, the threat of civil war destabilized prices for slaves, making buying and selling slaves a less attractive business. Slave merchants, small business owners of their time, God bless them, began investing more and more of their money in land while divesting themselves what? of slaves, further depressing the price of slaves. The slave market was collapsing. Seems to me, PT, you're saying North America's government defined slaves, that is, human beings, as a commodity, a means to build wealth and provide free labor. The Dred Scott decision declared that slaves were not people, not citizens, and not entitled to protection under the Constitution. Slaves were property. Yes, a commodity. Today, labor is no more than it was in the 1800s, namely that labor is indentured servitude saddled with meager wages and debt to meet daily living costs so investors can maximize their profit. In our form of democracy, investors are the protected class, while labor, the expendable class. Capitalist fodder. When you say debt, are you referring to credit card debt? Yeah, who owns labor's credit card debt? Bankers, financiers, investors, today's equivalent of plantation owners. How do investors benefit from owning credit card debt? They buy and sell debt like plantation owners bought and sold slaves. Like slaves, debt is a commodity. When an individual creates credit card debt, they are beholden to the owner of their debt. Slavery, reimagined. Our labor landscape is no more than a reimagined plantation, an infrastructure created to protect the investor and exploit labor. Today, labor lives off the plantation giving the illusion one is free while shopping at plantation-owned stores, paying for plantation-produced goods with debt owed to and owned by plantation owners, Dave's financiers. In our financial system, zero-sum capitalism, investors win, labor loses, profits prevail. Damn! Wealth creation with countrywide reach! Now that's scalability! Just saying!